People who can't understand Dharma well have to do purification and have their correct merit. Why? To understand Dharma will cut through a lot of neurosis. Will cut through a lot of emotional crap and a lot of games that we play. So what happens is if we want to cut through self-deception, if we want to cut through neurosis, we have to have a method. In order to be able to practice the method, we have to have merits. Why? Because if we practice merits, we won't suffer anymore. But we suffer less. To suffer less, you have to have merits. So for people, when you teach them the Dharma, their mind is very thick and very heavy and very difficult to understand. A, their habituation is that they're used to using their mind to think small, small things. So when you give them big things, they're like, Example, you get a kampong auntie, you're trying to teach him about emptiness, the no no, the blah blah. You're trying to get a kampong auntie to teach him about the, the big no. Do you think they'll understand? Because they're stupid? No. Their habituation is small, small, petty things. So people who are very used to thinking about petty things, small things, you try to teach them big things, you have to retrain their mind. You understand that? One. Two, for them to understand and practice and realize it is merit. Intellectual understanding is not enough. So what do they need to do? People who find it very difficult to understand the Dharma and therefore practice it and then gain the result, they have to engage in purification practices, such as prostration, such as the 35 confessional Buddhas, such as Vajrasattva. And that's exactly why we have to do the four preliminary practices before Tantra. Why? If you don't have the four preliminary practices, you're not ready to get Tantra, you won't know what to do. Even if they talk to you, you won't understand, you just be like, there with your mouth open. Yes, literally. So, when you don't understand the Dharma well, when you can't perceive it well, when it doesn't go in deep, you have to do purification practices from your heart. Continuously. It's very, very powerful. 35 professional Buddhas, Vajrasattva's meditation and mantra recitation, the four opponent powers, and also prostrations. Very, very important. If we don't do that, we'll constantly always be in the Dharma class with our mouth open. Not understanding. And then how do we lose? Because the chance will pass. Our teachers won't be alive forever. We won't be in this good situation forever. In the monastery, the monks on their free time do a lot of prostrations. They do a lot of retreats. Why? To understand the teachings. Why? We can see. In fact, a lot of the monks, two, once, once every two or three years, will actually save up their money. And go to Bogaya, take a train up there, stay up there for two, three months in a very cheap place and do 100,000 prostitutions. Some will do 100,000 in one shot, some will do 20 and 30,000, and they go back down. Next year, they go back and do it. I saw it many times. To call up there, where are you going? Doji de Andrais, a chat sale, or a check out means I'm going to Bogaya to do prostitutions. Then we already have purification practice. Why? This is because next year I want to understand the text even better. I rejoice. And then we immediately give some rupees, give some money, give some food to donate towards his practice because he's going to go through practice. So we pray that in the future we can do the same by making offerings to sustain that person to do practice. You understand? Yes. Very, very important. And engaging in Manjushri's mantra, very important. Lama Tsongkhapa, same. Lama Tsongkhapa, Manjushri, Umar, Vazanadi. Very, very important to do extensively. Very, very important. Why? It increase. And there are some people in their previous lives, they are already studying and practicing Dharma. So in this life, when you teach them very simple, they understand they pick it up very fast. Everything has a cause, everything has an effect. Each time we have Dharma class, each time we get together, your knowledge will increase. Why? I have something to share with you. I have good intention, and you have good intention. We combine all this knowledge. But you have to do your homework. You have to read, and you have to do your practices, and you understand much more. What's, what, why, why is it beneficial to understand more, and you can apply it? When you can apply it, the fear of death is less and less and less. Why is it less? Because death just becomes a passage, not an end. Huge difference. Huge. If you if we look at our parents and we look at normal people around here when they get old, and their hair is white, they just sit around, they're frustrated, they're bitter, they're angry, they hold on, and they're worried. Most of the time they complain, they're not happy, they're angry sin, or they're just waiting for death, or they're sick. But when you see the old monks and nuns in monastery, they're very different. 
Their attitude is different. Their happiness is different. And you never hear any monks complain they're old or they're unhappy or bitter. Okay. No. Never. Because they spent their lives on something virtuous. And something that doesn't deceive them. The, the normal old people, they spend their lives on love, on sex, on food, on children, on fun, on house, and car, and wealth. They deceive them. Why did they deceive them? Because they didn't bring their happiness. So usually in the end, they're very unhappy. Unhappy. They're still chasing after money, still have debt, still have problems. It never ends. So in the end, even when they're old, they're very unhappy. Why? Because they, they deceive themselves and they, have, and they are deceived. Why are they deceived? They don't have God. That's the difference. We can see that. I'm not saying that to insult any old people. I'm not saying that as, as something like, oh, I'm so holy, they're so bad. No, it's a matter of fact. It's just a matter of fact. It's very rare to see happy old people in modern society. Very rare. Very, very rare. But it's not in the monasteries. You say, well, they don't have any worries. But they chose that. They chose not to have worries because they know that whatever worries they wouldn't have would have been deceptive. You chose to have kids. You chose to have a house. So you chose the worries. You chose the bills. You chose the responsibilities. You chose it. So don't say the monks don't have anything. They don't have any responsibilities. That's why they're happy. Yes, they also didn't get the pleasure like the sex and the fun and the company and the movies and the disco. I don't. They didn't get your inverted commas pleasures either. It's fair and square. You understand? First one. How do we clean? You mean physically or do you mean respect in respect wise? Um okay. Gold statues that you get from India or Nepal that you buy from the stores, right? They have gold on the face. You don't use anything wet. You don't use anything abrasive. You use a light tissue and just go like that and wipe it off. The rest of the body, you can take anything and just wipe it off like it. Make sure your hand is clean and make sure you use cloth or tissue that's not been used for other items. Then it's okay. But if you make a mistake when you do that, there's no negative karma because you're with us. Showing them respect is admiring their enlightened qualities. When you show respect for their enlightened qualities, you plant the seeds in you to achieve the same qualities that you respect. So you show respect to the statues, not because if you don't, you get punished, it's to achieve their qualities. Like not putting down books on the floor or something. So statues that are painted with gold and stuff, then you make sure you don't have anything abrasive and wet because it will be gold. And the rest of the body, you can just wipe it lightly with something damp or something clean or something dry. And you can clean it anytime you like, wipe it anytime you like, move it anytime you like. Just make sure your hands are clean. Why? If your hands are not clean, it's not you're going to go to hell. Cleanliness is considered a show of respect. A show of respect means you know their qualities. When you know their qualities, show respect, you actually plan the affinity to gain those qualities. That's the reason you show respect. Not because you're going to go to hell or something bad's going to happen or they're going to punish you. No. If we believe that, then the Buddha says that's an evil in you. No. Is that clear for you? Anytime they are not, they can move it anytime. No problem. 